It is 8 p.m. and here are our top stories. A late May storm bringing rain to the metro and soggy snow for the mountains, which no one will warm back up. I love the city and I love the department. And if I can help out, I want to help out. Aurora's interim police chief is ready to get to work. Denver 7 Investigates goes one-on-one -on -one with Dan Oates about his plans to hold officers accountable. I want to make sure that anybody that's deployed is having an impact on crime in Aurora. As Denver's rental market heats up, more residents are being priced out. We found out that our rent was going up about $500 a month or 30% more. Like, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay this? One renter running out of options before the deadline to move out and move on. It feels like you're taking one step forward and two steps back every time. And the two-decade drought is over. The Avs are back in the conference finals, taking on Connor McDavid and the very high-scoring Oilers offense. It'll be a tough challenge, but uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Good evening, and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Danny New. Let's begin tonight with a live look over downtown Denver. We are getting a much-needed rainfall across the Front Range. So let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson. Mike, I feel like every time it rains now, I'm like, Mike, are we good now? Is this enough? Are the levels good? Yeah? All's well? It's good. It's very helpful. It's a great rain from the sense of it's just gentle and coming down. It'll really uh, help kind of recharge the soil quite a bit along the front range. So here's how it looks currently up on the Pearl Street Mall in Boulder. Uh, one soggy person right there. And that is about it. As far as our weather conditions into the evening hours, uh, it's going to be chilly. It's 46 degrees right now in Denver, 49 at Greeley, 46 in Fort Collins, 38 degrees in Leadville. And that's the main band of rain. It's mostly the Front Range Mountains and the Northeast Plains. Other parts of the state not getting this beneficial precipitation, but we are here. Winter weather advisory for the mountains above about 8,000 feet and some moderate to heavy rain up over parts of Weld County into the Broomfield area right over central Denver. It's a little lighter farther down to the south, but these are good soaking rains. So that's what we'll see for tonight into tomorrow morning. Snow for the mountains about three to six inches. The wet weather ends tomorrow and warmer weather coming up for the end of the week. I'll have all the details in a few minutes. Thank you, Mike. And moving on, the city of Aurora has a new interim police chief, Dan Oates, who led the police department from 2005 to 2015, officially took over last week. Today, Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski sat down with Oates to learn his plan to transform a department that has faced a lot of controversy recently. Aurora's interim police chief is ready to get to work. Oates told me his three priorities, reducing crime, partnering with the community to solve problems, and operating an efficient organization. These are all priorities his predecessors have also struggled with. This is our best effort as a department to provide as much transparency as possible. That was 16 years ago. I am confident that this police department will do everything within its power to resolve this case. Nearly a decade since leaving Aurora, Dan Oates is back as the city's interim police chief. It's a bit surreal. Why did you agree to take this job? Because I love the city and I love the department, and if I can help out, uh, I want to help out. Oates is once again taking over an embattled police department. His arrival comes more than a month after the contentious firing of former police chief Vanessa Wilson. There should not be partisan politics in public safety. She was not fired for cause. She was fired as an at-will employee. Your thoughts on everything that happened with Chief Wilson, and how do you move forward from that? I'm not in a position to evaluate the details of what happened with Chief Wilson. I will tell you that her departure left a leadership vacuum, which I am here to fill. A vacuum, Chief Oates says he plans to fill with accessibility and transparency. Being there, uh, being out with the cops, those kinds of things create, I think, a morale boost. On top of morale issues, the Aurora Police Department is under a consent decree after an AG investigation found racially biased policing and excessive use of force, something that has not helped the department with its struggles to hire and keep good officers. A lot of angst over how the department's reputation has been damaged by recent events and, and a willingness on the part of everybody here to, to get beyond that and sort of get back to work. Oates is also taking over amid controversies surrounding a massive records backlog with at one time more than 2,500 cases stuck in a queue, delaying investigations. How do you plan to tackle the records backlog and how would you describe that issue? I'm fairly confident that that issue has largely been resolved and we've essentially gotten back to where we're supposed to be uh, with regard to the record situation and the, and the categorizing of crime reports. Oates says a major priority is reducing crime, specifically the city's auto theft problem. And more and more common, uh, auto theft is being tied to, to other acts of violence. So if we can tackle the auto theft problem here, and there's a clamoring in the community to do something about it, 
um, th that might be something that can be helpful. Aurora recently pulled its officers from the statewide auto theft task force. Oates says he has no plans to add those officers back. Instead, he wants his officers to focus their attention on Aurora's auto theft problems before turning any attention to the rest of the state. I'm Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. Thank you, Jennifer. Oates will help Aurora find its new permanent chief, which the department hopes to hire by the end of the year. Two bodies have now been recovered from Lake Pueblo after a boat capsized over the weekend. Officials found the body of a man earlier this morning. The body of a woman in her 30s was recovered Sunday night. Eight children and three adults were rescued from the water. CBW says there have now been eight drownings in Colorado this year, including four in the past week. An Arapahoe County judge has dropped criminal charges against Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy. The DA requested charges be dropped. The Broncos' former first-round draft pick was arrested earlier this month following a dispute with the mother of his one-month-old child. According to court documents, Judy put the woman's wallet, baby formula, and the baby's medical paperwork in his car and then locked it. The district attorney cited a lack of cooperation by the victim as a reason for dropping charges who had previously requested that they drop them. Conversations surrounding the deadly surge of fentanyl are continuing to grow in Colorado. Countless families are living through the crisis, including one now preparing to bury their 15-year-old child. Denver 7 CB Cotton spoke with them tonight to share their message. Danny, funeral arrangements are now being prepared for 15-year-old Josiah Velasquez. His family says he took a blue pill on May 14th and never woke up. Today we spoke with those family members and they say the pill was laced with fentanyl. And Velasquez, he was on life support for almost a week before doctors ruled that he was brain dead. Today the team's brother and cousin spoke with us about raising awareness after this tragedy. They're currently printing shirts and making candles with messages about the dangers of fentanyl laced drugs. They're selling these items and will use the money to pay for funeral expenses. Loved ones say Velasquez never used drugs, but in recent weeks they believe bullying and peer pressure led to the situation. Now they're hoping other teens will learn that taking even one pill can be enough to end your life. There's going to be another Josiah. There will be another Josiah. Fortunately, we can spread awareness. We just need more people, you know, having our back and on our side. Arvada police tell me they are investigating Josiah Velasquez's death. Family members are hoping someone will be held accountable under Colorado's new law that has harsher penalties for those in possession of fentanyl. For Denver 7 News on Local 3, I'm CB Cotton. Thank you, CB. And teens are increasingly turning to technology in order to purchase drugs. As Denver 7 has shown you, in, shown you in the past, one way teens have been able to get drugs undetected is by using emojis in text messages with dealers. Each combination of emojis represents a drug the teen is trying to purchase, and this has led the DEA to release a new guide helping parents decode their child's emoji messages. You can find that guide right now on the DEA's website as part of its One Pill Can Kill campaign. Now, rent costs throughout the Denver metro continue to climb, and they're even pricing some people out of their homes. Denver 7's Rob Harris talked to a woman in Arvada who is leaving her apartment next month to avoid a 30% increase in rent. Rob? Yeah, Danny, her apartment complex told her to renew her, le her lease in July. She and her partner would have to agree to an extra $500 per month. This is hardly an isolated case. This is the trend in the Denver metro. A report from University of Denver's Daniels College of Business found that average rents are up $222 over the past year. That's a 13% increase, which is well above increases in wages and even the record inflation we've seen with other costs. So for people like Sarah Gardner living here, that has a very real impact on building a life in Denver. It feels like you're taking one step forward and two steps back every time, you know, prices increase in regards to rent or utilities or gas prices or food prices. It just constantly feels like uh, I'm being pushed down um, and can't really get ahead to make a life for myself. Gardner says she tried to negotiate a lower increase with her apartment complex, but she was denied. She was told that the increase was in keeping with the market rate for her unit and that new tenants were willing to pay that amount. And research from DU seems to tell us that's actually true. So tonight at 10 o'clock in Denver 7, we're diving into the numbers to find out how many apartments are sitting empty in Denver right now and what that can tell us about the future of affordable housing.
Coming up on Denver 7 News at 8, inflation is soaring and everyone's feeling the impact. When the prices go up, our wages don't catch up, we lose our real income. But a new plan to turn things around could put the burden on Colorado's working class. My fear is that for middle-income Coloradans, it will be harder for them to get the mortgage that they need in order to afford that home. A wet and cold night tonight in the Denver area and snow coming up to the mountains through tomorrow morning. Plus, the Avs looking to spoil the Oilers' chances of meeting Lord Stanley. Praise thy name. The Avalanche come right back. We have a live update coming up in Denver 7 Sports.